Hey guys, when I'm releasing videos and putting information out there on grow lighting, I often get some pushback, often positive and uh, constructive, but sometimes misled and um, you know naive. And one of the things that I get pushback about is you know this sort of light penetration idea about um, distance from lights to the um, to the plant canopy. Um, and part of that is the belief in the inverse square law. Now the inverse square law is uh, a law of physics really and it's based on the principle that if you have a point of light or a small sphere of light emitting light evenly out in all directions that if you double the distance from the light source to the target, let's say it's a square, that the intensity, the light intensity or the quantity of light reaching that square will be um, inversely proportional. So basically if you've doubled the distance, it's going to be one over two squared. So one over the increase in the distance squared. So one over two squared is one over four. So you double the distance, you get one quarter of the light intensity on that, that square. A square representing a course your plant canopy. There's a couple of reasons that this is not the case. I'm going to show you by the way demonstrations and test results in a minute. But, uh, there's a couple of reasons it's not the case. First is most grow lights are not a point or a sphere source emitting light evenly in all directions. Most lights these days are LED bars such as this, this one and they are a plane or a square or they behave like a plane and they're actually emitting light from many different points. Um, onto this object. Or you could have a bulb like I tested here with the CMH bulb which does emit light in all directions but not necessarily evenly. And when they are used usually it's with the reflector which collimates or directs the light. And again with LEDs not only are they not a point source uh, but as I said they don't emit light evenly in all directions. They often have um, primary or secondary lenses so it covers over the LEDs directing the light in a narrower beam than it would otherwise go. But even just the LED itself um, in this configuration, a bare LED just with a, with a coating on it, that light is emitted um, in a way that's more intense dead center than it is around the edges. So it's not emitting it evenly in all directions. And in fact it only emits it in about 160 degree arc anyway. Um, next thing is that with uh, the use of reflectors and reflective walls, light that would otherwise be lost off this plane when it's, when it's hung twice as height is getting directed back in by reflective walls. So it bounces the light back in and this um, reduces the light loss and therefore um, reduces the likelihood that uh, the inverse square law will hold true. So the tests. I've tested, as I said, this, uh, this is the Array 2 Pro here. So 130 watt or thereabouts LED bar light. Sat into a 2x2 two two, and I measured that at 20 centimeters and 40 centimeters, so at 8 inches and 16 inches, uh, with and without reflective walls. And uh, yeah, interesting to see the results. So, first test with at 20 centimeters with reflective walls got an average power of 801. This is uh, as I said hemming the light in keeping the light in at 40 centimeters um, so doubling the height the intensity was not a quarter uh, it was nowhere near a quarter it only dropped by about 12 percent so it should have dropped by 75 percent it only dropped by 12 percent so the inverse square law is certainly not um, uh, applicable in that case. So then I took this, the Mylar walls away and did the same measurement. So I measured at 20 and measured at uh, 40 uh, with no reflective walls and the power dropped by 52%. So much closer to the 75% but still not quite there. Very few people however will operate their, um, their grow lighting without reflective walls. It's just so wasteful. Then I used the CMH bulbs. Again, the CMH bulb in theory is emitting light evenly in all directions, but um, you know, I was hanging it downwards like that 
it has some some fixings, some bits of uh, yeah, some fixings to hold the inner bulb in place down at the bottom, so it's not really emitting as much directly down as it should. However, that's the way I tested it. I'm sticking to it. So with no reflective walls, CMH bulb, the difference between a 20 centimeter and 40 centimeter, or eight or 16 inch hanging height. So doubling the height, it reduced the um, light emitting by 58%. Much closer to the um, inverse square law, getting close to it, not quite there. Again, as I said, it's not, um, it's not really emitting evenly in all directions because of the, uh, the little detail at the bottom of the bulb there. So, I hope I've demystified uh, this inverse square law argument, made it simple, and um, given you ammo to uh, fight anybody who throws it around <laughs> on any forums uh, or comment section, by the way, uh, under the videos. You could help me out big time by uh, answering some of those. And uh, yeah, every day is a school day. Hope you enjoyed. Any other tech topics you'd like me to cover? Any comments um, on what I've done here? Any criticism? <laughs> Come on. Uh, would be more than welcome, truly. So, uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.